Are you ready? Yeah. Hello. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel once again after a long time this time like about two weeks we've been super 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 busy with people coming over people leaving stuff to get done that was a long intro <laughs> you got up we're gonna do another episode of dear sadie and p today where we read your letters and respond to them but um we're running a bit behind as usual so if you just wrote to us um just be patient because we're doing it chronologically so now we're reading letters from july <laughs> okay i think there's always like a three month lag so oh God. hopefully it's not about current matters. didn't we say we were going to get better at this it's not possible it just happens uh, anyway let's just roll with it okay so i'll read the first one and you read the next one all right do i have anything in my teeth no are you sure sure <coughs> So, hi. Have we started yet? <laughs> Look, if you're not gonna be patient, we're not gonna do videos together anymore because you're stressing I'm me out. So patient. <laughs> hi. <laughs> I just discovered your YouTube channel and I'm so glad I did. It's so nice to see people I can identify with. It would be really nice if y'all could give me some advice. I've been attracted to women since I can remember, but only recently accepted it. So I have never been in a relationship with women. Also because I'm attracted to probably straight, older, 10 to 30 years, married women with children. So now here's my story slash problem. Six years ago, my mother uh, met her boyfriend, which she married this year. I absolutely adore his family and they integrated me into their family since day one. We're all very close and see each other often. And I fell in love with my stepdad's sister, now kind of my aunt. The first time I saw her, I was 18, officially an adult, and she was 28 years older than me. We connected since day one, and she's the most loving and caring person I know. We always stay in contact, and we're very close. I'm sure she really likes me, but I don't know if she likes me the way I like her. We always kiss hello and goodbye, which I love, but it also hurts because I can't be with her. We've slept in the same bed, we've seen each other naked, went to holiday together, and we were maids of honor together. I'm always fantasizing about her, which makes me feel guilty. <laughs> I'm always so happy to see her, but afterwards so depressed when I can't be with her. I have really strong feelings for her, and I'm not sure if I should tell her. Maybe it'll make things awkward, and I don't want to hurt her husband and son, and I don't want to destroy our family. And the problem is I just can't exclude her from my life. So I have to live with the joy and pain. What would you do in my situation? Do not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Give the truth bomb. Go ahead. That's my advice. Do not. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, I feel like you should look outside and you should, you know, open yourself up to see people like, like uh, people who uh, are, uh, you know, Gay. Gay. And, Did uh, you have a brain fart? I had. <laughs> I was trying to say it in a different way, but anyway, yeah. Uh, because uh, I think that uh, it's not very healthy for you to stay in this zone, because I call it like a comfort zone in a way, because um, I feel like uh, when you feel you don't have any other opportunities out there, and that you really want to, you know, to be with a woman, uh, then you're looking for the closest thing that is to you, which unfortunately closest things to us are straight. <laughs> um, I thought you were gonna say family, but yes. Yeah, and family too, family yeah. too at this point. Um, so, and the fact that uh, this person is not uh, related, like uh, it's not blood related to you, uh, gives you even um, more of a permission sleep to be attracted to this person mm -hmm. and uh, it's very comfortable I mean to me like your situation I mean comfortable in which way you recognize you like women but you have no uh, like uh, maybe you you don't really want to come out with that 
and uh, but you have to take that step to take yourself out of that comfort zone and go and look where you can actually find people who are gay and for sure you know you're gonna you don't have to put yourself in this complicated situation you know I mean it, it, it talking about it, it, it is a possibility maybe she can even help you if uh, you just have to make sure that she's advanced enough to understand you and maybe guide you uh, so that mm. uh, you're mm -hmm. getting over her. That's going to be too complicated. Is it? Okay. Because then she plays like this mentor role, which is also very attractive. Like any role of, I feel like, teacher or mentor is very attractive. Mm. I, I wouldn't go. I, I think what your original advice was, don't tell her, is the correct ad advice yeah. in this case. Also, because you said she has a husband and a son. Mm. I mean, it's not like. Let's take the gay thing out of the equation for a minute. Even if, um, let's say you were a boy, a guy, she's still married with a kid, you know? It's still like cheating outside of the marriage. And I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. It, it, in the long run, it wouldn't work. So whatever feelings you're having, I, I empathize with you because I've had also very strong crushes, oh my God, mm -hmm. on straight older women. And uh, it, sometimes it's just not meant to be. I've had, I've had really a lot of these in my life. And mm -hmm. the, the difference with this one was, first of all, she was interested in me too. With this one, with you. Oh, with me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not? <laughs> okay. And it was very apparent, like from the get go, it was it was mutual. Yes. It wasn't me having this strong crush. And we knew that we were gay. We knew that we were gay. We knew. Like I said it, you said it, it was out there. Yeah. Uh, I was single, you were single. So it was a totally different context. Okay. And and then you feel there is a feeling there that is reciprocated, so yeah, and it's interesting because sometimes almost like the crushes I've had one sided almost felt stronger because there's that element of, you know, unrequited love mm -hmm. and it makes the crush grow stronger. It's almost like you have this imagined version of a connection with someone and sometimes that imagined version is way better than the reality would ever be. Um, but when the real thing is playing out, it almost feels like less exciting in a way yeah if that makes sense yeah it is it is less intense because it's uh, that you feel that it's uh, unattainable something so it makes it even more intense um, yeah but at the same time you know why do you want to get your life complicated and go through suffering and all of that I mean things can go can be easy and you know when it's right, you know it because you don't have to go through all this, um, you know, making efforts or trying to understand or maybe, you know, tr um, imagining, s s making up stories in your head that they're not true and becoming delusional and all that. This is very good because it introduces the topic of limerence. You know that word, limerence? Yeah. I we recently, talking to you yeah. I recently discovered this term, and it's a term in psychology used to describe this kind of a thing where you have this imagined uh, relationship with somebody, and it's very strong. Like the feelings become almost obsessive, and they take up so much of your time in your head, like throughout mm -hmm. the day. And it, you, we, we tend to confuse it with love, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's not. And the trick is to know your boundaries in the real world. Like you can have anything you want in your imagination, but once you get back to the real world, like you can't confuse the boundaries there. Mm -hmm. And with this person in your life, cle clearly there's a boundary. Like she is your step family. She has her own family. And what you're experiencing is in, in your head, basically. And, and it's not about the age gap. Because you could have the same age gap with somebody who's actually available for you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's do another one. That one's, Did you yeah. have anything else to say? About no, that? let us know. Yeah. Uh, if you did anything, anything happened in these past three months, and 
or anything will happen in the next or what your decision let us know I mean we are interested in mm. uh, follow ups or comment down below on this video so other people can read it too exactly if something happens do you want to read this one sure it's a bit it's a bit longer <laughs> you have to read the long one dear Sadie and P Empower. First of all, I'd like to take a moment to express my gratitude. Thank you for making videos and being brave enough to proudly share all that you are. By doing that, you're representing not only your beautiful selves, but also many of us who are still unable to come out in the open. Thank you. We appreciate this. I stumbled upon your YouTube channel some years ago and I was instantly in awe of your views on life and of the deep connection you two share. You're very lucky, but you're also very strong and determined. You seem to have fought a lot to live the life you wanted for yourselves. That alone deserves some praise. Aww. That's nice. Paola, as a fo fellow Italian, I bow down to your bravery. Oh, you're Italian. This may seem like an easy country in which to come out as gay, but it's not. Not really, not yet, not for all of us, but it's home and we'll always come back home. Sadia, I must commend you as well. I know this country may seem hostile sometimes, but I can't really imagine what it feels like for you to be living here. <laughs> I'm just glad you are with the woman you love, and I hope you will find more reasons to feel welcome here one day. Which you already are finding, I see. <laughs> anyway, don't ever lose your creativity and kind, kind attitude. You seem like a very special creature. Nice. Aww. As I mentioned, I found your channel some years ago, but then I lost it. I recently found you again, and I have been binge watching your content. The way you both talk and express your thoughts and feelings is so relaxing and so inspiring. I like to tell you my name, but I don't think it will be prudent. What I'm about to disclose is only known by my best friend and myself. I guess my other friends and family suspect that I'm also into women because of some comments I sometimes make. But still, no one truly knows. I don't really like labels, but I guess you could think of me as bisexual. Growing, growing up, I had three major crushes on some of my female teachers. Never acted on any of them. Never told anybody a thing. I used to think I knew the pain of unrequited love back then, but oh boy, I was, I was I wrong. At 18, I stepped into my first serious relationship and it was with a boy my age. Big mistake. I didn't really love him. I was just following a path I thought my parents and society wanted me to stay on. He was unhappy. I was unhappy. I broke up with him eight months after we got together. Some years went by and I got my first job. And guess what? I fell in love there with my boss, a married woman with children. <laughs> a profoundly Catholic woman, an older woman, but most of all, definitely a straight woman. I know how to pick them, don't I? <laughs> I don't really need to tell you, but I think you can picture it. A fine recipe for disaster, and it really was. Long story short, I looked at her like a lovesick fool for four years, during which I was single, because I was totally taken by her. I never told her a thing. Even though we had these long personal conversations during coffee breaks, she would tell me she was in an unhappy marriage and that her kids preferred their father and she felt very lonely. She would tell me she was happy I was in her, li in her life and she admired me and thought of me as a daughter. She would give me book suggestions and send me links to stuff she thought I might find interesting. I sent her the music I liked and she played her piano for me on a few occasions. Wow, that's nice. I felt a connection when she said she had gotten married just to please her parents, but ended up being unhappy because I felt I almost did that too. I told her I admired and kind of liked some middle-aged actresses, and she told me I was special for appreciating all the women's natural beauty in a society in which she felt like trash, just because she was aging. I told her she was beautiful to me. She replied that I was too kind and again, quite special. I never felt so happy, so in love, but I always knew I never had a chance. She often said generic homophobic stuff, but I chose not to dwell on it. I thought I could open her mind. I shared some of my thoughts on the LGBT community without fully revealing my sexual orientation. 
and she listened, but always told me I was a sweet girl, and she'd pray for me not to support such unnatural acts. Oh no. Shtoom. Yeah. Now you can put that sound effect. It's funny how I had this idolized version of her on a pedestal. Even though she's not a nice person, really. She's a bigot, rather closed-minded. She cares about money more than she cares about people. She has nothing that I w would want in a romantic partner. Still, I kept thinking about her. Maybe I thought she was pretending to be all that to get by in her public world, but I could have freed her and freed myself at the same time. How did it end? She tried to play me wrong in the workplace, pay me less, and have me work more, and that kind of stuff. I was mentally and physically drained. I got anxiety attacks, so I quit. I resigned and got another job. It's been three years. I never saw her again. Boy, was she angry when I left. She called me ungrateful and said I was leaving her when she needed me the most. After a few months, I texted her to say happy birthday. She was so cold. After that, I kept texting her thrice a year, just not to let the connection die. She responded each time, but never reached for me first. I don't know why I did that. I'm way happier now and more balanced, but still I text her to talk about movies and books, the kind of stuff, even though I still know she's kind of toxic. Still, I saw something good in her. I fell in love a year ago with a man 10 years older than me. He's so good to me. I love him and the fact that he seems to respect everything about me. I'm an introvert and I don't like people most of the time. I don't like being around them, but he gets me. He gives me space. I'm with him because I chose to be. We've been building a safe space for us and a very healthy relationship so far. Still, my ex-boss is on my mind sometimes. Should I tell him about her? I plan to tell him that I'm attracted to women too, eventually, just because it remains a part of me. That's the only thing I haven't told him about me yet. It's just that I don't really know how to start the conversation. He's not homophobic, but I feel like he may think I'm telling him to leave him to go and be with a woman. I don't know. It's weird going about, him, about it in my head. Maybe it's just me. What do you think? Thank you for your time. I wish you all the very best. Whoa. Wow, that was, a, that was quite a story. I was, I was like... What do you think? I wasn't sure, again, if it was another case of limerence. Mm -hmm. And in a way, in a way it isn't, in a way it's not because it gets complicated with these lesbian crushes because sometimes they are straight and in that case it is limerence, right? It's not real love. But sometimes they are internally homophobic and there's always that like thread of hope or oh, maybe, maybe they'll op I'll open up their mind, maybe I'll change them. Sometimes it actually happens, right? So I'm, I'm not blaming you for, you know, having hope and trying to make this thing work uh, for four years, but also, um, good job for getting out, because that was definitely toxic. Yeah. What What do you think? Uh, so I think there was a connection mm -hmm. uh, with this uh, with your boss, and uh, it was a beautiful connection until it got very nasty. But that connection, uh, I mean, it's a sign that basically you have a connection with women. You like women, and. Uh, as long, what I understood is that you never came out with anybody, with your family, you are still a closeted uh, gay. So, which means that as long as you're closeted, you're going to be a match, you're going to connect with, with women, uh, but it's always been either with other closeted, who are very strongly closeted, you know, like they don't, come out or they don't want to admit to themselves or they are totally homophobic. So you're going to basically meet, you're going to be a match to women who are homophobic because you are also homophobic, homophobic deep inside because everybody who is closeted and they are afraid of coming out, it's just because there is an internal homophobia. I, I was internally homophobic okay, until I came out finally. I had to go through a long process before I uh, came out. And it's a very, that, that, that's actually a very painful process. Very painful because you have to come out. You have to 
show the truth of yourself to everyone. And uh, so that's because of what struck me is that you are with a man now. But she says she's bisexual. And uh, you say you are bisexual because now you are with a man, and uh, but you have uh, feelings for women, uh, so no problem. Uh, but it's easy to be with a man because uh, you know it's a straight world. Uh, being gay is not accepted, and all of that. As you open your letter, you talk about how difficult it is to be in Italy in a country where there is a close community and and come out. To be honest, I had the same thought when I came here, but I realized that the more I was coming out, the more I was surprised by seeing a lot of acceptance around me. And I am in Calabria, southern Italy, okay? Here. Yeah, but I, I don't Maybe agree is... with you with what you said, because she said she was bisexual and, you know, we got to... Um, Respect that. I yeah, totally there, respect there, there are bisexuals. Gosh. Like maybe she is with her soulmate right now, and she's like really happy, and that's a absolutely. Thing. I'm not. I respect I, that absolutely. Because just because he's a man doesn't mean he's absolutely. No, no. This is not my point, though. No. It's not absolutely my this point. Is kind of how it came across. No, absolutely no. I'll say something. Okay, okay. and tell me if you agree okay. so because you were asking should i come out to him and i think yes yes you should absolutely. definitely come out to him just because um if he knows how much you love him and how much you want to be with him it wouldn't be a threat to your relationship just to know this thing about you it's just part of who you are so if you want to express more of who you are i think that would make the relationship even stronger but you see you are exploring a relationship with a man have you ever explored the relationship with a woman? Sorry, I'm going to provoke you on this. And uh, <laughs> I've been very, like, I mean, that's why we are here and you guys uh, write to us. And uh, I, I feel like I don't want to ruin now <laughs> your relationship. Don't get me wrong, oh my God, <laughs> this is getting worse. Uh, I don't want to ruin your relationship with uh, the person you are with now. But I feel like Think about the internal homophobia, I, I said before, and uh, being bisexual, I, I don't, like, it, it, when you find somebody you can connect with, it can be a man, it can be a woman, it can be anything, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't me, matter to a lesbian, but okay, go ahead. For me, it can be, like, there is lots of fluidity, fluidity when it comes to, to these things, but fluidity you know, you can say I, I'm fluid like when you have also experienced the other side, like you experienced a part of yourself, which is being with a same sex uh, person. So I, I, like you can think about these words and, uh, you know, try. Well, I'm, I'm not responsible for what she just said and the damage well, I caused. Why? What am I saying? Like, let's open conversation. Why? No, because you're saying something like. What? 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 I. What are you understanding from what I say? Maybe I'm not saying it right. No, because now she's in a committed relationship and she seems to be in a healthy relationship, like for the first time, and that's amazing. And for me, that's more than enough. Maybe it's her life journey to end up with a man. She's bisexual in the end. Like, that's kind of the deal. You can be with one or the other. But in this case, when she says, I'm still thinking about her, she's not thinking really about that person. That person, that, that, that your boss represented for you the alternative, the, the, the other side of you, the one that you've never explored. So it's what this situation represents to you, not what it really... Like, uh, you know, it happened, the boss, you being with a man, etc., etc. It's, it's uh, uh, trying to understand uh, your choices and what is behind the choices. What is, what, so what I'm asking you, what is it behind the, your choices? Is it fear of coming out as a lesbian? So that prevents you from exploring that side of yourself. I'm not going to say just stay here. Oh, you found somebody. So why are you thinking about the other one? No, I'm going to provoke you and uh, make you think about your choices and what's behind your choices. Uh, I'm not bashing you because you, you didn't come out. I'm just provoking you, provoking your thoughts. 
um, you know, and think about what's behind all your choices. That's all. Um, okay, I think we'll, we'll leave it at that because that was plenty for a video. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any updates, definitely leave them in the comments so other people can also see what happened um, with your stories. And if you'd like to write to us, I'll put our email in the description. It's always in the description. It's just sadiemp at gmail.com. And yeah, we'll see you with another one. Really and please soon. give us a, uh, you know, a feedback on this. Uh, it, maybe I might be totally a jerk, like, a, you know, like a total, uh, what you say, totally wrong about all this, but um, yeah, I mean, we can open a conversation about this. It's a very interesting topic. Okay. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you hate me. I don't hate you. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't hate you, but I hate the energy you put forward. <laughs> Which energy? It's fine. Let's just agree to disagree. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't hate you. Are you going to kiss me or no? Yes. Yeah.